my brothers and sisters to be able to come before you tonight. Here it is, um, December the 31st, um, our last night in 2020. Um, so tonight we greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And we wanna thank you for tuning in tonight in our watch night service. And I want to thank all of those who have participated and wrote with us throughout this year during these uncertain times and during this global pandemic as we try to bring you the word of the Lord each Sunday. And here we are tonight, thankful that we have another opportunity to come to you one last time in 2020. And I know that many of you tonight, you are looking forward to 20 and 21. You can't wait for um, 1201 to happen, but we know that God does everything decent and in order. 2020 was a rough year for some of us, but I must confess that it wasn't all bad. The Lord did um, bless us. There were some blessings um, in 2020. And so we're just thankful tonight that he's given us this opportunity and this privilege to come to you on the final night of 2020 to share a word from the Lord with you. And so we want to come tonight and finish up what we didn't finish up last week, which is um, part two, it is time for closure. And the scripture reference that we wanna to use tonight is found in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter seven and verse eight. And here's what it says. Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. And the patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. That's what we talked about last week. It's time for closure. And you know, many times as we close out one year and go into the next year, um, most of us think all it is is just to wait for 1201 to strike and then we can go into a brand new year. But I would say to you tonight, my brothers and sisters, if you have still, you still have some unopened chapters in your life and some things in your life that you have yet to deal with, then we really can't go into 2020 expecting God to bless us. So there are some things that God will expect for us to do in order to close out 20 and 20. And so that's what we wanna talk about tonight. Many of you, wherever you are, uh, all of us got certain situations and circumstances that we've had to face in 2020. There's some things that we wrestled with. There's some things we cried about. There's some things that we felt like um, our backs were against the wall. But yet, I want to say to you, if you're watching me tonight, um, God has blessed us and God has brought us here tonight. Amen. In spite of all of our difficulties, in spite of everything that we've had to deal with so far with this global pandemic, uh, many of us have lost family members, we have lost friends, and, and, and we still don't know when the end is near. But yet we do know that God is faithful. So tonight, as we look to the word of the Lord, I won't go back over the whole sermon that I did last week. You're just going to have to go back and look at part one. Amen. So you can um, understand where what we did and what we said and, and how the Lord spoke to us. But we will give you a few of the points that we talked about last week. But the Bible says that it is in, in Ecclesiastes chapter 7, better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. And the patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. So we all know, according to what we talked about last week, before we can close out 20 and 20, we must deal with some areas in our life that we have yet to deal with because we don't want to go into a brand new year carrying the same old baggage and the same old mindset. And so as we look to the word of the Lord tonight, there are several things, several um. Um, points that I gave you, three points that I gave you last week that um, God would have us to close out before we go into 20 and 21. And so for those who are watching tonight for the very first time, if you wasn't with us last week, last week we talked about before we can go into 2020, before we can bring a close 
to this year, God expect for us, amen, to do some things in order that we can go into a brand new year, amen, and be blessed and be right in the will of God where God would have us to be. It is not going, a new year doesn't mean just because a calendar year happens and you can say, all right, I'm going out of 2020 and going into 2021. But I believe that we need to deal with some issues in our life so God can bless us in a brand new year. And so the first thing we talked about last week uh, concerning this message, it is time for closure, is we have to review um, the lessons that we should have learned. We talked about last week, amen, that, that sometimes when God is trying to teach us something, some of us get the lesson and some of us don't. And we, we need to understand tonight when we don't get the lesson, we are bound to repeat it over and over again. And so sometimes in order for us to get the lesson, we talked about last week that God will sometimes send suffering our way, not to kill us, not to harm us, but only to get our attention so we can make sure that we complete the lesson that God has given us to do. So all of us, we need to take a self inventory tonight and make sure um, that we have learned from the lessons that God has tried to teach us in 20 and 20. And so the Bible says in Proverbs um, 14, um, chapter 14, verses 12 and 13, that there is a way that seemeth right to man, but there is the ways unto death. And so sometimes we can do some things in life that it seems like is right, but when we look and compare it to the will of God, it is completely wrong. So it is the will of God tonight that we come together and we make sure that we have learned our lessons because if we have not, we are bound to repeat them again. So I pray tonight that, that somebody uh, or not all of us have learned the lessons that God had placed in front of us. Then we talked about um, if we're going to close out this new year, we have to make certain that we take accountability. Um, one of the hardest things for many of us to do is own our mess. We're quick to blame. We're quick to point fingers at other people. But before we can cast blame on somebody else, we need to make sure that we take accountability for our own mess. James chapter 4, verse 17 says, Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doth it not, it is to him sin. So, so my brothers and sisters, if we're going into this new year, we have to make sure that we take accountability for the stuff that we have done. That was the second point that I gave you. And then the third point that I gave you last week is um, before we can go into 20 and 21, God would have us to close ungodly doors. This year in 2020, many of us, amen, we opened some ungodly doors that God was not in meaning that we connected with some ungodly relationships that God was not in. Those ungodly relationships are filled with evil content that has the potential to move us away from the things of God. Anything that comes into your life that moves you away from the will of God, amen, it is ungodly. And so God would have us to make sure, amen, my brothers and sisters, that we close all ungodly doors before we attempt to go into 20 and 21. So tonight we're going to start with point number four. And point number four is, amen, we can't go into a new year without denouncing certain mindsets. What do you mean, Bishop? Many of us tonight, we've been dealing with certain mindsets. We've been carrying them for year after year after year. But God wants us to know tonight that if we're going to be prosperous, if we're going to be successful, if we're going to be able to carry out the purpose that he has called us to carry out, we have to make certain, my brothers and sisters, amen, that, that, that we denounce certain mindsets. And this mindset that I want to talk about tonight, which is point number four, is we have to denounce the feeling of being unworthy. That's right. Many of us, we go through life and we, as we go through and try to navigate through life, we have, we have tried to go through life, amen, and we wonder why certain things are not working out 
We'll wonder why we're not feeling like we should be feeling. And it's all because of the fact that we are dealing with the spirit called unworthy, an unworthiness spirit. Listen, many of you have been living and carrying the spirit of unworthiness around for years to the point where for some of us, it is ingrained in our spirit. Now let's take a closer look tonight at the root word unworthy. What does it have to say to us? It says the, the, the root word of unworthiness or unworthy says to us, amen, that we are insufficient. Amen. We're insufficient in worth and we are undeserving. The spirit of unworthiness also says that we are lacking in value. Amen. That we are unsuitable. And the devil would even take it even further and whisper in our ear while we're wrestling with the spirit that we are despicable. But I come to tell you tonight in the name of Jesus, before we can go into this new year expecting God, amen, to bless us fully, we have to make sure that we denounce certain mindset. And this mindset of unworthiness, amen, you would be surprised of how many people in the body of Christ and out of the body of Christ wrestle with the spirit of being unworthy. The, 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 the word unworthy, it is also defined as where sometimes you completely feel insufficient and undeserving of what you truly desire. The spirit of being unworthy at times have many of you feeling that you have no real value, amen, and you just have to settle for whatever you can get. But I come tonight, my brothers and sisters, to tell you that if you are in the body of Christ, if you belong to the Lord Jesus Christ, amen, then you don't have to settle for whatever you can get. Amen. God said he want us to be the head and not the tail. But this spirit, this spirit called unworthiness is a spirit that, that suffocates many of us at times where it has a lot, amen, um, sisters feeling as though um, you are unsuited, amen, to be somebody's wife or, 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 or you're unsuited to be in a worthy relationship. Just because you don't fit, amen, a certain mold or a certain group of people, that does not mean, my brothers and sisters, that you are unsuited. The devil has lied to you, amen, when it comes down to you walking around, amen, feeling like you are unworthy and that you are not good enough, amen, and you don't qualify in certain areas of life. So you continue to go from one year after another year feeling that you are unworthy. Now, the question becomes tonight, Bishop, how does this happen? The spirit... The spirit of unworthiness came out of somebody's mouth, amen, when they told you, amen, that, that you weren't good enough. Uh, many of us have been into relationships. We've been in, we've had friendships, and during those times of, of friendships and relationships, we have had situations and circumstances where somebody told us, amen, that we were unworthy, that we were not good enough. And, and when we hear those words, amen, coming into our ear gate and then get into our heart gate, and if we don't shake it and if we don't denounce it, then we will go out throughout life, amen, feeling as though we are unworthy, accepting um, everything except God's best. But I come to tell you tonight, the spirit of unworthiness did not come from God but it came out of somebody's mouth, amen, that said something to you at some point in your life to make you feel this way. But tonight in the name of Jesus, you got to un, you got to denounce that spirit and you got to declare who you are. And one thing that you are not, you are not unworthy. And so God would have us, amen, to denounce some of these things that we've been carrying year after year after year. Listen, all the spirit of unworthiness need is to have, amen, to find just a little open, a little openness where you have insecurity issues and that spirit will come in and it will dwell with you. 
That's why, saints of God, we have to be careful of who we align ourselves with. I say it all the time. Everybody that smile in your face, amen, that says good things about you does not mean that they care about you. The Bible says try the spirit by the spirit. And sometimes it takes a while, amen, to really figure out what type of spirit that you're dealing with. That's why we should not rush into anything fast. The Bible says don't be too quick to lay hands on nobody. We shouldn't be rushing into anything, amen, until God has given us the green light. Because some people, amen, they have been sent by the devil. They are tools. They are enemies, amen, that have sent by the devil to break you down and to sow evil um, words into your spirit. But I come to tell you tonight, my brothers and sisters, this should be the last year that we walk around with this spirit of unworthiness, feeling like that we're not good enough, feeling like that we're not suited enough um, to be this or be what God has called us to be. You have to get to a place, my brothers and sisters, where you have to know that you are better than what that spirit says that you are. And understand tonight, it just does not attack young ladies, but it also, amen, attack brothers as well. This spirit at a certain age or in this spirit attacks us, it comes in, it lies to us, it tells us you're not as sharp as you used to be, um, you don't look like you used to be, and it tells us all of these things, and then we start going through life feeling like we are unworthy, um, feeling as though uh, we are not good enough to fit here or fit there. But I want you to understand tonight and never forget that the Bible says that Satan is the father of all lies. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. But you have to know when the spirit of unworthiness attack you, you have to know how to fight back. Well, Bishop, what do you mean when you say we have to know how to fight back? Well, as believers in the body of Christ, God has given us tools to work with and to fight with as we navigate through this thing called life. The devil is always coming at us. He's always trying to take cheap shots at us. He's always coming in and trying to plant stuff in our minds and in our spirit. But we have to know how to fight back. And one of the weapons that we use to fight back with is the word of God. Proverbs 23 and 7 says, as you think within yourself, so are you. The spirit of unworthiness, it is a sneaky spirit. And a lot of times it causes us to see ourselves in a certain way, amen, that is not true. The spirit of feeling unworthy can keep us stuck by believing that this is the way it's going to be. And we might as well settle for it because this is the best that it's going to get. But I come to tell you tonight that the devil is a liar. Amen. God has, amen, not second, third, or fourth for you, but God has the best for you. So you have to denounce this mindset and come to the place, saints of God, where you understand, amen, that God love you. So if we are going to go into this brand new year, 2020, we have to make certain that we have denounced the spirit called unworthiness. We have to get closure in that area of our life. So, so how do we do that, Bishop? Well, first of all, we have to know deep down inside of us that God really loves us. And, and, and nothing, and I mean nothing, my brothers and sisters can separate us from the love of God. Nobody, no thing can separate us. And I know that to be a fact because in Romans chapter 8 and verse 35, Paul says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? And Paul names all of these things that tries to separate us from the love of Christ. He says, shall tribulation or, or distress, and if we be honest tonight, 
Um, we've had our share of tribulations. We've had our share of distress during this year of 2020. This pandemic came and it took us all by surprise and, and we had, had not ever seen anything like it. And, and, and it, it took a lot of our family members out of here. And there were moments and times, saints of God, that it had us feeling distressed, but even feeling distressed, the Bible lets us know that cannot separate us from the love of God. He says tribulation, distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword. He says, nay, in all of these things, you got to notice tonight, my brothers and sisters, Paul says, after he tells us what cannot separate us from the love of God, he goes on to tell us in verse 37 and chapter 8, he says, nay, in all of these things, we are more than conquerors through him, that is, through him that love us. There's that word again, that love us. If we're going to get rid of the spirit of unworthiness, amen, we've got to know, amen, that God loves us. So, Bishop, how do we know that God loves us? Because the Bible tells us that he gave his only begotten son to come into a cruel world, a world of sin, amen, to die for our sins. He went to Calvary's cross. They hung him high and they stretched him wide. And the Bible says, amen, they beat him with a cat of nine tails. They beat him until his flesh was open. Amen. They whipped him all night long. Amen. And while they whipped him and while they, they stuck nails in his hands and nails in his feet, he shedded his blood for us. He hung right there because he loved us so much that he was willing to give his life for you and me. And that ought to make somebody shout out tonight, amen, when you feel like that spirit of unworthiness is creeping up on you and that nobody loves you and you're not good enough, I come to tell you tonight, amen, that you are good enough and you were so good enough to the fact that Jesus gave his life so that you could have life and you could have it more abundantly. So tonight, as we get ready to cross over into 20 and 21, we've got to denounce that. And if you're listening to me tonight, if you're watching me tonight and you've been wrestling with that spirit of unworthiness where at times it made you feel so shameful when you got among certain people, it made you feel unworthy to the point where sometimes you couldn't even lift your head up. But I come tonight in the name of Jesus to tell you that you've got to, you've got to declare and you've got to denounce that spirit out of your life because it did not come from God. And so tonight, whoever that I'm talking to tonight, you got to open up your mouth and you got to denounce that spirit out of you. You cannot afford to allow that spirit to continue to hang on you another year. You got to leave it right here into 2020. It never belonged to you in the first place. So before you get ready to cross over into 2020, be honest with yourself. Don't feel bad about it, but just denounce that spirit. Amen. You've got to understand, amen, that God has given us authority. And by the name of Jesus, we can denounce it and it has to leave. And when it leaves, we have to make sure um, that we put something else in that space amen so that spirit won't come back again so for you that are watching me tonight you need to start feeling good about yourself you need to know that you are precious and god does love you and wherever um, God wants to fit you in. That's where he will fit you in. But understand, get it in your mind and in your spirit tonight. You, you don't have to fit into every little clique. You don't have to fit into every little group. Amen. There are certain places that God would have you to go. There are certain groups that God would have you to deal with. You don't have to try and fit into everybody's group. Because let me tell you something, you can't please everybody. So, so tonight, amen, before we cross over, 
because if, if, if you've been feeling that way and you've been wrestling with that spirit, then you need to denounce it. You need to let it come out of your mouth tonight that I denounce the spirit of unworthiness tonight in the name of Jesus. It's no longer going to rule my life. It's no longer going to dictate to me. It's no longer going to tell me whether I can smile or whether I can be happy. But tonight in the name of Jesus, you have to turn it loose. Um, 1 John 4 and 19 says, amen, we can love God and depend on him because God first loved us, meaning that with all of our flaws and all of our messed up ways, God says that he loved us so much that he was willing to sacrifice his life for us. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, and verse 20, he says, we were bought with a price. Let me tell you something. We were bought by the blood of Jesus. So therefore, the spirit of unworthiness, amen, um, has no hold on your life. you got to say it tonight. It's not going to hold me anymore. I'm not going to stay stuck anymore. I'm going to turn this page tonight, and I'm going to denounce the spirit call unworthiness because you got to understand saints of God who you are and if God didn't say amen um you was a certain thing then don't you accept it people are going to say a whole lot of stuff but you got to uh, you got to let it go through one ear and go out the other ear you cannot afford to let what people say to you hold a place in your heart whenever you allow it to hold a place into your heart it begins to become a part of you. So I'm coming tonight to tell you, amen, God got greatness for us. He's got, he's got so much for us that we have yet to see. But we got to get rid of some baggage before we go into 20 and 21 so that none of us, this baggage will hold us or keep us away from the blessings of God. So if, if, if you've been wrestling uh, with that spirit um, year after year, Tonight is your night to denounce it in the name of Jesus. Amen. God got the power to take it out of you. And when God take it out, you need to fill that void with something else. You need to fill it with more of the love of God. Fill it more with the peace of God. Fill it with the joy of the Lord. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. So somebody ought to get excited tonight. I don't know who I'm talking to tonight, but I believe there's somebody out there that's been wrestling with that spirit and it has kept you stuck in one place. Amen. Year after year after year. But tonight God says it stops here. It ends here, right here in 20 and 20. We're not going to allow it to cross over with us into 2021. And so if we're going to close out, amen, this year, we have to make sure we denounce that spirit of unworthiness. Point number five, the next thing, if we're going to close out this year, amen, and expect the blessings of God for a new year, then we have to do something else. What is it that we have to do, Bishop? We have to number our days. Well, what do you mean when you say number our days? The Bible talks about in Psalm 90 and 12, it says that we ought to number our days. Amen. Um, um, in Psalm 90 and 12, it is a prayer the writer wrote. Amen. And he was trying to tell us in Psalm 90 and 12, it means that we need, amen, to make sure, um, saints of God, that, that, that we assign purpose to our life. And so for somebody here tonight that don't know what Psalm 90 and 12 is, let me read it to you here tonight so you can get a full understanding of what God is trying to say to you tonight. I want to take my time. I want to make sure you get this here tonight because I want you to walk in the blessings of God. And so if you got your Bibles, I want you to turn with me to Psalm 90 and I want you to turn with me to verse 12. And here's what it says. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Teach us to number our days that we may apply our heart to wisdom. 
So what that means, teach us to number our days. It means that every day God blesses us with a new day, we need to make sure that we assign purpose. Somebody need to say purpose tonight. We need to assign purpose to the days that we have left. We just can't go through life, amen, saints of God, with no purpose. Waking up a brand new day and living that day out with no purpose. So the writer here was saying, teach us to number our days, meaning to make sure that every day God blesses us to see a new day, we have to make sure that day is assigned with purpose. God wants to make sure that every day of our life has an assignment. Listen, we have to realize that every single day we have, it is a gift from God. That's why we have to be so careful, amen, and try, trying to wish time away from us. I know 2020 was bad. I was here to witness it. But we can't be so quick, amen, to rush time away. Every day that God blesses us to see a new day, amen, we have to be thankful. And when we are thankful, we have to assign each day with purpose. Somebody got to say tonight with me, I have to assign each day with purpose. Each day, amen, we have to assign it with purpose before it get away from us. Because if we don't assign each day that God blesses us with, that day will get away from us and we will end up using that time, amen, um, of allowing the devil um, to, to mess with us or allowing the enemy to cause us to walk in the direction that God would have us not to walk in. So, so we have to make sure. And even if, even if there's a day where you feel like you're waking up and God has blessed you with a new day and you feel like, well, I just need to rest today. I, I got to have some rest. Amen. Let me tell you something. The body, amen, is designed for it to have rest. So even when you are resting, that is purpose. Because what you're doing, you are giving the body time to, to, to replenish itself so you can do the things of God. So every day that God blesses us with, we have to make certain, amen, that we assign purpose to it. We just can't go through life just living it any kind of way, but it has to have purpose to it. And so the Lord says, teach us to number our days that we may apply um, um, wisdom um, to our hearts. The message version says, teach us to live well. Teach us to live wisely in well. Now what the writer was saying to us, amen, that we are to apply, apply our hearts to wisdom. It is saying every day, amen, that God blesses us with, amen, we have to have a plan. Hear me when I say this, because some of us navigate through life every day. Every time God blesses us with a new day, we navigate through it and we never have a plan. But this is what the writer was saying when he says, apply our hearts to wisdom. He's saying every day we have to make sure that we have a plan. Most of us just drift through life and say, well, whatever happens just happens. That's the wrong thing to say. You just cannot say whatever happened will happen. You've got to have a plan. You can't just drift through life and expect whatever to happen to happen. What if, it's, what, if what happens is all bad? None of us want that. We've seen enough bad already in this year. So, so the Bible says, amen, in Psalm 90 and 12, amen, that, that, that we are to apply our hearts to wisdom, meaning that we need a plan. Everybody wants, everybody got ideas and say you want to do that and you want to do this, but you have to sit down and you have to get a plan together. Most people go through life. And they say, well, I want to be a millionaire. Well, you just can't become a millionaire just by saying it. You have to have some type of plan of how you're going to become a millionaire. You just can't go through life and say, I want to live in the biggest house. I want to drive the best car. Amen. You've got to have a plan, a plan put together that says how you're going to acquire this. You just can't live out your life. Amen. Every day saying whatever happens will happen. 
But I come to tell you tonight to give you some nuggets that before you go into the new year, you've got to number your days. When you get into the new year, you have to make certain, amen, that, that, that whatever you do, you assign purpose to it. And then you have to plan. You have to sit down and you have to think. Y'all are not helping me here tonight. Amen. You, be, you would be surprised of how much power you have in thinking. Amen. Thinking is a powerful, a powerful tool. That's why the Bible says uh, when David got into a situation and he found himself so sad, amen, the Bible says at one point, David think himself happy. So that's how much power, amen, thinking have. You can think yourself happy. So you need to sit down and get a plan instead of just going out, amen, in this direction and that direction and shooting an arrow and having have no target to hit. You have to have a plan. So many of us, we go through life and we become envious. We become jealous because so many other people are so blessed than we are. We see other people with this and we see them with that and, and, and we want to talk about them and we want to get jealous. But amen, that's because they have taken the time to assign each day, amen, with purpose and then they have put a plan together. Some of you, you're still in the same place you were five years ago because you had no plan. So I come to tell you, you got to have a plan. God told a lot of us some things that he wanted us to do, but we have left them undone. And let me tell you something tonight. Don't even try to put it on COVID and say, well, I couldn't do it, God, because you know COVID hit. Let me tell you something. If God assigned something to you, he already knew COVID was coming. So you, you can't just use that excuse because the whole time you've been sitting there doing nothing, you haven't thought about anything, you haven't put any plans on paper, and you wonder why you're still stuck in the place that you're in. It is the will of God, saints of God, that 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 God would have us, amen, to have plans in life. And I understand sometimes um, things don't always go to the way that you plan them, but at least have a plan, even if it don't go the way that you want it to go, at least have a plan. Let me tell you something. I remember uh, many years ago when First Lady got sick, and she passed out on a job. And, and, and when I got the call, they said, we found your wife passed out. We don't know how long she's been out, but we've called the rescue squad. What do you want us to do? Do you want us to wait until you get here? Or what do you want us to do? And I said to them, I said, take her to the hospital. Just let me know exactly where you're taking her. That particular day when she passed out, little did we know that was the last day that she would ever work again in corporate America. So what are you saying, Bishop? What does that have to do with plan? Well, here's what it has to do with. But prior to her getting sick, amen, when she started her job, they gave her a package. And that package, amen, inside of it, it had um, what type of medical health you wanted and it had whether you could you want to buy long-term disability or short-term disability. And thank be to God that God spoke to my wife and we got both of them, short-term disability and long-term disability. We had a we had a plan set in place that if something should happen, we would be covered. So my question is to you tonight, do you have plans set in place? If your employee come to tell you on Monday morning, amen, we don't want you anymore, do you have a plan? What happens if you've been in a marriage for 30 years and then all of a sudden um, she walks out on you? Do you have a plan? Or are you just going to sit there, get the press, amen, and just, just, just drill away. You have to have a plan. Y'all not saying nothing here. God blesses us to have, amen, income. He didn't give us this income just for us to throw it away, but God would have us to have a plan for what he has blessed us with. So when it comes time for our children to go to college, we're not we don't have to go on a Facebook and put on a GoFundMe page, but we have a plan. We have saved up money. And I've got to say this tonight, as black people, we just got to get our stuff together. I get it, it bothers me so much when I see people that have died 
and didn't have no life insurance um, and, and somebody else in the family now got to figure out how in the world they're going to bury you and put you away. Listen, don't put that burden on your family. You need to have a plan before you die. Make sure you got your stuff in order. Somebody need to say plan. God would have us to make sure that we have a plan. You just cannot go through life without having a plan. You talk about you want to have a business. Well, have you sat down and put a business plan together? You talk about you want God to bless you with a brand new job. Well, have you updated your resume? Or do you have a resume? You're complaining. You're, com you're crying about all of these things. Amen. And you don't have a plan. So before, amen, uh, we get into 20 and 21, we have to start working on a plan. You have to sit down and, and, and look at your, the, the dynamics of your family and find out, amen, where you need to put plans in place. Instead of, amen, dying, leaving your family with the burden of trying to put you in the ground, and then what that calls is dissension and confusion, confusion among your family members and your arguing and your bickering about going back and forth for who's going to pay what. Well, we can eliminate all of that if you put a plan in place. Don't ride around in a nice car and dress in the finest clothes and eat the finest food and don't have no life insurance. That's tacky. That is messy. You got to have a plan. I got to move on because I know I'm making somebody mad. But if you're getting mad, that means, amen, you need a plan. Somebody say you got to have a plan. I need you to talk back to me tonight. Put it in the chat box. Somebody said, you got to have a plan. And not only do we need to have a plan, but we have to make sure that each day that God blesses us, we have to assign purpose to it. Don't just go out, amen, and just say whatever will happen will happen. You have to assign purpose to your life. When you put a business together, amen, you, you have a business plan. You have a mission plan. So let me ask you tonight, what type of plan do you have for your family? What type of plan do you have for yourself? Take the time and sit down and put a plan together. All right, we're moving on because time is running out. Let me get to point number six. If we're going to close this year out, we have to we have to make sure that um, we have made progress. Somebody said progress. At the beginning of 20 and 20, the Lord gave all of us, amen, instructions on what he wanted us to do. He's been tugging on our hearts to do certain things. Amen. He's been, he's been bringing certain assignments. Um, he's, he's been telling us, amen, you got to bring um, this assignment to a close. You've been dealing with it long enough. It's time for you to bring it to a close. And so we have to understand, my brothers and sisters, we cannot go through life, amen, um, complaining and fussing about everything if we're not making any progress. What was the last thing that God told you to do? And the question is, have you done it? So before you can close out this year, you have to make sure that you have made progress. Because if you're not making progress on anything, then God is not going to give you any more opportunities, amen, until you make sure that you have done what you supposed to do with what he's already given you. So um, don't expect, amen, God to bless you and move you into different areas and put you on different platforms if you haven't made progress. I understand those of us that's been called into the ministry, we have callings on our lives. Everybody want to walk around with a title. You want to be a pastor. You want to be a bishop. You want to be an apostle. You want to lead a group of people. But the question is, what type of progress have you made since this pandemic has started? What type of study have you done? Amen. What type of classes have you done online? How many sermons, those of you that are call yourself preachers, how many sermons have you put together? Amen. If you want God to bless you with with different opportunities, you have to make sure that, amen, you have made 
progress. You can't expect God to bless you, amen, if you're not making progress with what he already gave you. And so some people are saying, well, Bishop, I can't make any progress because I don't have any help. Let me tell you something. God, amen, is standing and he's waiting to send help your way. And the reason why I know that is because in Acts chapter 18 and verse 10, God was dealing with Paul on a situation and God God told him, he says, Paul was afraid, amen, about going to a certain place. And God told Paul, he said, listen, Paul, he says, I am with you and nobody is going to attack you. And there is much people in the city. In other words, God was telling Paul, go ahead on where I'm telling you to go, because I've got people there waiting on you to help you with what you need help with. Some of us, amen, we're just sitting there. We haven't talked to nobody. We haven't called nobody. We haven't sent nobody no email. And we just think all of this is supposed to come to us, amen, and, and stuff supposed to fall out of the sky. No, you got to make some progress. you got to put some work in. I'm moving on because I know this is getting under somebody's skin. But let me tell you something. If you're going to be blessed of God, if you're going to receive the blessings of God, if you're going to walk in your purpose, then you have to make sure, amen, that you do certain things before you can ask God for brand new blessings. Point number six, and we're almost done here. Amen. Before we close this year out, we have to make sure, amen, that you make your wrong right. Hear me what I'm saying tonight. you got to make your wrong right. Well, Bishop, what do you mean? It means you have to take some time and you have to repent. Um, and I know some of you will say, well, listen, Bishop, um, since this pandemic has started, I've been shut up in the house and I haven't um, done anything. I've been staying to myself. Well, first of all, it's always important. It doesn't matter who you are, whether you've been staying up in the house, because you can stay in the house and still get in trouble. Y'all not saying nothing to me here tonight. You can be by yourself and still get in trouble because you can think about the wrong thing. So before you go into a brand new year, you have to sit down and you have to repent. You have to say, God, search my heart. And whatever you find in my heart that's not like you, whatever in my heart that is unrighteous, amen, that, that is not pleasing to you, God, I'm asking you to fix it. Because let me tell you something, all of us got something in our life that we need to repent for. We've, we've spoken some stuff to some people but with, with this little tongue in our mouth, and we've heard a lot of people, and we have yet to say that we're sorry. Amen. We have to repent, amen, and and tell God that we're sorry. But understand tonight, I'm just not going to throw this word out here, repentance, and not tell you what repentance means. Repentance means, amen, you've got to um, turn about. You've got to change direction. You have to change your mindset. You have to change your way that you're thinking, amen, and you have to start thinking God ways, amen. Some of us, we got a lot to repent about. Because some of us, since this pandemic has started, amen, if you want God to search your heart, I guarantee you he can find some laziness somewhere in your heart. And if you've been lazy and you have yet to do anything, you need to repent for it. Because the whole time that you've been lazy, you could have been doing something, amen, for the kingdom of God. So before we cross over into 20 and 21, we have to take some time and ask God to Church us. Amen. Because some of us got some stuff inside of us. We've got some pride inside of us. Some of us don't like to be wrong. Amen. We want to be right in everything. It doesn't matter for some of us. I don't care what subject come up. There are some people that know everything about everything. And sometimes they, you're not even talking to them, but they will get in it 
And if you don't accept our way, they will quickly get mad, amen, and start an argument. Let me tell you something. That is pride. And if you are like that tonight and you've got to have everything your way, you need to repent and ask God to forgive you. Then there are some of us, we got to be so controlling. We got to have everything our way. Amen. In the household, in a marriage, everything got to go your way. You are so controlling. Everything got to be this way and everything got to be that way. You got to take some time and you've got to repent and ask God, amen, to forgive you for being a controlling person. Y'all not hearing me tonight. You can walk through life all you want to and think, amen, that you know everything and, and you, you know all the right ways of doing it. But let me tell you something. The Bible says pride cometh before the fall. And so you can walk around here with the big head thinking you're better than everybody else and you don't have to repent because you're always doing right. It's just a matter of time before you take your fall. Amen. So all of us, all of us need to get some time to ourselves tonight. Amen. We started early at seven o'clock. So you got plenty of time to go before the Lord tonight and ask God to search your heart and whatever it is, you need to repent from it. You need to turn around and go in the other direction. You need to change your mindset. Some of us been carrying the same old mindset into every new year, year after year after year. And God is saying, amen, you got to repent from that, having that type of mindset. Amen. Before you go into the brand new year of 20 and 20, there's some mindsets that you've been carrying for year after year after year. And God is saying, if you want my blessings to be upon your life, then you got to take some time and you got to repent and you got to ask God to forgive you. Listen, 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 listen. All of us, some of us, some of us got ego problems. I, I can't hear nobody here tonight. Yes, we got ego problems. I know I'm hitting the bell and I'm trying to ring it loud because I want all of us, including myself, to be able to cross over into 2021 with the blessings of God on our life. But you can't get those blessings if you're walking around with the big head, thinking just because, amen, you got a title behind your name, just because, amen, you're operating in a certain money bracket, just because you live in a better house than somebody else and you look down on them. Let me tell you something. The only time that any of us ought to be looking down on anybody is when we're reaching down to pick them up. So we got to ask God to help us with our ego. We have to ask God to help us with our controlling problem. We have to ask God to help us with anything inside of us that is not like him. My time is up. I got to get out of here. But listen, saints of God, we cannot fix this thing. There is no magical pill um, that you can fix these things with unless you go to God in prayer and talk to God about these things and then you can fix it. No amount of money can fix it. No amount of pointing fingers that somebody else can fix it. No amount of running to this relationship, to that relationship. It's not going to fix it. Only thing that can fix it is when you come before God and bear yourself naked before him and ask God to clean you up. All of us need to be cleaned up in one way, shape, form, or fashion including myself and wherever you are tonight and however you think about yourself you got some stuff that need to be cleaned up too so before we go into 20 and 20 we got to prepare our minds and we got to prepare our hearts lord fix our hearts lord fix our minds don't let us go into 2021 with the same old mindset with the same old stink attitude with the same old corrupt ways we have to we need god to work that stuff out of us before we go into 20 and 21. We're going to pray tonight, and I pray that those of you that are watching me tonight, that is your sincere desire tonight for God to really come in and do a work in your heart. Amen. Listen, I'm not trying to point fingers. I'm not trying to judge you because I got just as much mess as you got. So all of us need God to help us, but we got to come to him. Amen. 
asking him to help us tonight. And for those of you that are watching and those of you that are listening, I pray that you have allowed God, amen, to find the space in your heart to come in tonight so he can begin to do a work in you. We're going to pray, amen. We're not going to be bashful. We're not going to rush this thing over, but I want somebody to be delivered tonight. I want somebody to be blessed tonight, and I want to see somebody get saved tonight. Maybe tonight in the name of Jesus, you've heard this message and you say for the first time, you know what? I think I need to go ahead on and give my life to Christ. A whole lot of folk have died and gone on unexpectedly. Some people that were here yesterday are not here today. So none of us know when our time is up. So it would behoove you, first of all, to want to accept Jesus Christ, first of all, because he's God's son. Second of all, because he went to the cross, he died for your sins, he shed his blood, and he rose the third day that you could have a right to the tree of life. Most people think the only reason that you need Jesus is to get into heaven. Well, you do need him to get into heaven, but you also need him to walk with you every day of your life while you're living here on this earth. We can't do this thing by ourselves, but we need a savior that will walk with us and that will guide us and help us to navigate through this thing called life. So if you're watching me tonight and you have yet to accept Jesus Christ as your savior, this is your opportunity tonight to come and give the Lord Jesus Christ your heart because none of us know when, we don't know where, when our number is going to be called. And let me tell you something, you don't want to die without having Jesus Christ in your heart. So if that's you tonight and you're listening to me and you say, well, Bishop, what is it do I need to do in order to be saved? First of all, I'm going to make this as plain, as simple as I can. you got to, first of all, recognize that you are a sinner. Amen. You have missed the mark. You have broken the laws of God, and you cannot save yourself. But you believe that Jesus Christ is God's son and that he came into this world and went to the cross and he suffered, he bled, and he died. But it just didn't end on the cross. But the Bible says they took him off the cross and they put him into a borrowed tomb. And the reason why the tomb was borrowed, because Jesus knew that, amen, after three days, he wouldn't need it anymore. On the third day, the Bible says God raised Jesus from the dead. And now he sits on the right hand of the Father with all power in his hand. So, Bishop, okay, so what do I do? First of all, um, um, recognize that you are a sinner, and you can pray the simple prayer with me. And it's something as simple as this. Father, in the name of Jesus, tonight I recognize that I'm a sinner and I'm lost. I can't save myself. But I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe that he went to the cross for me. I believe that he suffered for me. I believe that he shed his blood for me. And I believe he also died for me. And most of all, I believe that he rose the third day. Lord, come into my heart, save me from my sin, and help me to live the rest of my days for you. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Help me to navigate through this thing called life. In Jesus' name, I now receive you as Savior and Lord. And if you prayed that prayer with me tonight, and if you've been sincere in praying that prayer, the Lord have, will have come in and he has taken a place into your heart. And it doesn't matter what happens after here. Amen. If you die tomorrow, if you prayed that prayer with a sincere heart, let me tell you something, that you will not spend not one day separated from the Lord Jesus Christ. You will be with him for eternity. So I pray that something, somebody out there tonight, that the Lord um, said something to you through the preach word of the Lord tonight, and it pricked your heart, and you received Jesus Christ tonight as your Savior. For the rest of us, we need prayer. We're getting ready to go into prayer. I can't see what you're going to put in the chat box, but I will tell you, if you're on Facebook Live and you're on Zoom, begin to whatever, whatever the Lord spoke to you about tonight in this message, 
put it in the chat box, write it out. I don't need to see it. God will see it. Amen. And we're going to pray about that thing because I want all of us to cross over from 2020 to 2021. Amen. Heading into a brand new life. Amen. It does not mean that we don't have more days of the global pandemic. Yes, we got some more days coming. But I tell you what, we'll feel a whole lot better if we straighten up some of this that the Lord have talked to us about tonight. So whatever it is um, that you want God to help you with, put it in the chat box. We're going to pray. I believe in the power of prayer. Amen. It's something about when we start talking to God. Amen. And, and we talk to God from a sincere heart, then God will start working on our behalf. It is the will of God that we talk to him. Amen. God wants us to communicate with him. And after we communicate with him, then God wants to communicate with us. So whatever you have tonight, put it in the chat box. Let's get ready to pray about it. I believe in the power of prayer. I believe God can change some things around. I believe he can clean up our heart. I believe he can change our mindsets. I believe that he can give us some plans. He can give us some brand new ideas. Amen. He can help us to close some doors that we've held open too long. I believe that he will allow us to help us to get out of some of these toxic relationships. So whatever it is for you tonight, just put it in the chat box. I'm going to give you a few minutes, and then we're going to pray corporate tonight Well, all of us together. You can pray along with me tonight in the name of Jesus. I just want to see you blessed. I just want to see you in the will of God. I want to see you with everything that God desired for you to have. And the Bible says that he will withhold no good thing from us, from those who walk upright before him. And you know what? I want to walk upright before him. And I want you to walk upright before him because everything that God has, amen, in store for you, I want you to get it. But before we can get those things, we have to make sure, amen, that God has dealt with areas in our life and in our hearts, and God has put us where we need to be in order to cross over into 2021. Amen. We're going to pray. I'm going to pray. If you're still putting stuff in the chat box, it's okay. But we're going to pray tonight, and we're going to believe God for a spirit of victory tonight. We're going to believe God, amen, that as we denounce some things out of our life, that we're going to feel a whole lot lighter than what we came into the sermon tonight. Because God is able to do anything except for fail. So, Father, in Jesus' name, we come tonight thanking you for 20 and 20. It's been a rough year. It's been a challenging year. It's been a year that we have never seen before. We've seen some things that have actually broken our hearts. We felt some things um, during this year that have broken our hearts. We've lost friends and we've lost family members. But Lord, we know that you're able and you left us here for some reason. And so Lord, tonight in the name of Jesus, as we get ready to cross over into 2020 in a, in a couple of hours, we wanna make sure Lord that we got things right with you. So in the name of Jesus, Lord, search the chat box, search our hearts tonight. Whatever is not like you, Lord, we ask that you would fix it and put it into place. And for those tonight, Lord, that are feeling sick in our body, we pray right now in the name of Jesus that, that your word, that body will line up according to your word for them. We pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, even if you don't decide to heal them, I pray that you would give them the grace to be able to go through it. It's been tough, Lord. Many of us, we got some open wounds, but we're asking you tonight to cut that wound open so it can lance itself and so, so it can get all of the nasty gook out of it so we can heal and we can start a brand new year and we can be, amen, we can walk in the purpose that you have called us to walk in. Father, we bless you tonight. We pray for family members tonight who are still grieving that have lost family members along the way. We pray for parents tonight who have lost children due to COVID-19 or, or some other form of death. We pray in the name of Jesus for the spirit of comfort. We're asking you for closure tonight on many things in our lives. And we know we can't do this thing on our own, but we need you tonight in the name of Jesus. Lord, we're not asking you to go there. We're not asking you to go here. We're no, we know that you are everywhere at the same time. So Father, 
Father, in the name of Jesus, sit down with us tonight. Wrap your arms around us. Give us the comfort that we need. Give us the closure that we need in the name of Jesus so we can go into this brand new year and we can be prosperous and we can be everything that you desire for us to be. We thank you tonight for every sermon that you have allowed us to preach. We thank you for the people who have rode with us, the people who've been faithful with us Sunday after Sunday. We thank you for those who have signed on tonight for this last sermon in 20 and 20. I pray, Lord, blessings upon everybody's home. I pray that there will be no lack in nobody's home in the name of Jesus. So, Lord, we thank you. We bless you. We honor you. We pray for even our family over in Sierra Leone. We continue to pray um, and ask your blessings upon them, Lord, and all the other countries, Lord, that's out here, that's suffering, that's going through this pandemic like, like we are here in the United States. God, send down your healing power in the name of Jesus. Thank you for every good and perfect gift from above Thank you for the opportunity of getting some things right tonight. And thank you. In a, in a couple of hours, you're going to allow us to cross over into 2021. And if you don't allow us to cross over to see 2021, we know if, if you should call us home tonight, it will be all right. Amen. It will be well with our soul. So we bless you and we honor you tonight. In the name of Jesus, for everybody that's listening and for everybody that's watching and for those who had a desire to come on, but for whatever reason couldn't come on, we pray your blessings upon them. In the matchless and adorable name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray, let the people of God say amen. God bless you. God bless you. We're almost done, but we got we want to close out with communion tonight. So, so while you're taking out um, your communion as we get prepared um, to, to commune with God um, for the Lord's Supper, I want to ask you to do something tonight. We're getting ready to close out, and I'm going to ask you to sow a, a, a seed um, as we leave out of 2020 and go into 2021. Um, we have people that will put it in the chat box for Facebook and for Zoom where you can go and you can sow the seed. I'm not asking you for any particular amount, but whatever God put on your heart tonight, we ask that you will sow the seed. So when we go into um, the year of 2020, we can go in with seed already planted into the ground. So for those of you, even if you don't have that seed to sow tonight, but you have a desire, amen, to sow the seed, just, just call that seed out loud wherever you are. And we believe that God will honor it so that the next time it comes around, God will have seed, amen, in the hand of a sower. But let me tell you something. Don't ask for seed if you're not going to sow. God only gives seed to the sower. So you can sow a seed tonight. Look in the chat box on Zoom. Look in the chat box on Facebook Live, wherever you're watching tonight. Someone will put it there, and you can go in in a general offering, and you can sow a seed, plant a seed as we cross over um, into 20 and 21. God bless you, and we thank you so much. We're getting ready now um, to, to move into this, this Holy Communion, and, and this is, this is a, a sacred part of of what God has called us to do. And I want to say to those of you um, out here tonight, if you have not given your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ, I would say to you that do not participate in Holy Communion because I don't want you to take this, amen, um, unworthiness, because if you take it unworthy, the Bible says there are some things that can happen to you. And I don't want anything to happen to you. So if you want to participate in this, um, this is no reason for you to just participate uh, and give your life to Christ because you want to take communion. But you need to give your life to Christ first because, amen, he died for your sins and he rose the third day. But you need to make sure that you have Jesus Christ into your heart, amen, before you become a partaker of this holy communion. So as you prepare yourself and sow your seed um, tonight, we're going to read the scripture and we're going to prepare ourselves um, to be partakers of the Lord's Supper. We want to call your attention to um, 
Paul's letter to the Corinthians church, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and starting at verse 23, I'm going to read this out. And if the Lord allowed me to explain some of this, I will. But most of you know all of this. Amen. We don't want to do it as a ritual, but we need it to mean something. Amen. We want to make sure that we are positioned, amen, in the body of Christ. We want to make sure um, um, that our hearts are right. Amen. And before we take Holy Communion, we're going to pray. We're going to ask God to fix our heart so that we don't take any of this unworthiness. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, starting at verse 23, this is what Paul says, amen, um, concerning the Lord's Supper. He said, for I received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you. He said that the Lord Jesus, the same night, and uh, the same night in which he had been betrayed, the Bible says that he took the bread. Now I'm going to take this as a symbol. According to the scriptures, amen, he took the bread, the scripture says, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in the remembrance of me. Verse 25, hold on. Um, verse 25 says, after the same manner, he also took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, this do you. As often as you drink this, do it in the remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink of this cup, you do show the Lord's death until he comes. Wherefore, this is important. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat, of, eat this bread and drink of this cup of the Lord unworthily. The Bible says you will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. So before we participate in this, Verse 28 says, but let a man examine himself. And so let of him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he who eateth and drinketh, eat and drink damnation unto himself, not discerning the Lord's body. He said, for this cause, many are weak and many are sickly among you. So tonight, if you take your bread or your cracker, whatever you choose to use, we're going to eat together. Bible said when he had given thanks, he broke it, and they all ate together. And then he took the cup, and you can use whatever you have tonight. Juice any type of juice, whatever you have. Um, and they took the fruit of the vine, which represents Jesus' blood. Without the shedding of his blood, there would be no remission of sins. And they all communed together. And the Bible says that after they had communed and they had ate together, Jesus commissioned his disciples to go into the world and make disciples. So I challenge you tonight, as we bring this service to a close, I pray that each opportunity you have to witness and to share the love of Christ with somebody in your family, out of your family, somebody you know, somebody you don't know, take this opportunity to share Christ with them so we can make certain that everybody get an opportunity even if they don't accept Christ, at least make sure you share Christ with them. It's up to them whether they want to receive him or not. We don't want to force the Lord onto anybody. Amen. It has to be um, genuinely, willfully taken um, in your heart. We don't want to um, um, shame anybody into receiving Jesus Christ. It has to be your choice. So again, my brothers and sisters, thank you for tonight. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for riding with us this year and coming on with us every Sunday morning. Thank you. I would ask you to do this for me. Please share this message with somebody. Don't get off and forget about it, but hit the share button so somebody else can be blessed by this message. Amen. Um, 
just as much as you've been blessed by it. So again, I love you in Jesus' name. New Life family, happy new year to you. To our friends that have been um, riding with us, happy new year to you. Amen. I love you in Jesus, and we're looking and we're expecting God to do great things in 20 and 21. Happy New Year. God bless you. This ends our service for tonight. In Jesus' name, see you on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock.